Now we're going to make the important distinction between tax avoidance and tax evasion in section 3. Let's start off by having a look at tax avoidance. Now, generally speaking, tax avoidance is the term used for legal tax planning. And this first point is the key thing that you need for your tax exam. Remember that tax avoidance is legal. Both individuals and companies have the right to organise their financial affairs in such a way that it can minimise their tax liabilities. And provided they do that within the terms of the legislation, then that would be legal tax planning and would be categorised as tax avoidance. A good example, if we consider an individual, is if they make a pension contribution during a particular tax year, they will pay less tax. The reason for that is the legislation says that pension contributions reduce taxable income, and with reduced taxable income, you will pay less income tax. That is choosing to arrange your affairs in a way to minimise your tax liabilities, but it is completely within the legislation and therefore is legal tax planning and would be categorised as tax avoidance rather than tax evasion. If you're reading around your subject, you may see that the term tax avoidance is now really not necessarily um, used for tax planning, legitimate tax planning. Sometimes it can be used to describe the situation where an individual or a company chooses to bend the rules of the legislation, maybe in sort of exploit a loophole to gain a tax advantage that was never intended by the legislation. So tax avoidance in that context, whilst legal, is not really within the spirit of the legislation. And a term that you may see is tax mitigation. That is now becoming more common for legal and intended tax planning arrangements. However, that said, for your tax exam, you are more likely to see the term tax avoidance. And the key thing for you to remember is that tax avoidance is legal tax planning. Let's now contrast that with tax evasion. Tax evasion is illegal. So that is the key point that you need. Tax avoidance, legal, tax evasion is illegal. Now, HMRC's definition of tax fraud or tax evasion is very broad. Let's take a look at it. It is the deliberate omission, concealment or misinterpretation of information or the false or deceptive presentation of information or circumstances in order to gain a tax advantage. So the key words that we want within this definition, they include deliberate and deceptive. That is the behaviour of the taxpayer. There is an intention to defraud HMRC. And the other key piece of information within this definition is to gain a tax advantage. So in a nutshell, we are looking at illegal, deliberate behaviour in order to gain a tax advantage. Let's take a look at some examples. If you deliberately submit a false tax return, that is one with inaccurate or incomplete information and it's deliberate, that would be tax evasion. If you falsely reclaim a, a repayment of tax or falsely claim tax relief, again, evasion. If you choose not to disclose any income gains or wealth or hide those offshore so that they're not visible to the UK tax system, again, that would be illegal tax evasion. And also, if you smuggle goods in, taxable goods from the VAT perspective, again, illegal, and that would fall within evasion. Now, as professional accountants, we have certain duties under the money laundering regulations with regard to tax evasion. So if we uncover tax evasion or we suspect tax evasion, then we have a duty to report this under the money laundering regulations. And typically that is reported within a firm to the money laundering reporting officer or in certain circumstances can be reported directly to the National Crime Agency. As well as the reporting obligations, it's very important to be aware of the rules with regard to tipping off. Tipping off would be when you provide information to, let's say, your client that lets them know that you have made a money laundering report 
or suspect money laundering. Tipping off would then enable your client, the tax evader, to cover their tracks and make prosecution a lot more difficult. So really important to remember with tax evasion, we have that overlap with the money laundering regulations. Now we're going to have a look at the general anti-abuse rule. The primary objective of the general anti-abuse rule is twofold. Firstly, it is there to act as a deterrent to taxpayers and stop them or deter them from entering into abusive tax arrangements. Secondly, it is also there to act as a deterrent to scheme promoters. So that is um, individuals or companies or firms that promote abusive tax arrangements. So they try to sell the use of these tax arrangements to taxpayers. So it's a deterrent to the taxpayer themselves and also to the scheme promoters. If a taxpayer does choose to go ahead with an abusive tax arrangement, then the way the general anti-abuse rule will work is to counteract the advantage that they were trying to achieve. And it does this by making a just and reasonable tax adjustment. And essentially this tax adjustment removes that tax advantage that they were seeking to achieve. Now, the legislation itself does recognise that oftentimes there are legitimate different courses of action that a taxpayer could choose. And where these courses of action are legitimate and reasonable, then they would fall outside of this legislation. So, for example, if an individual wanted to start a trade, they could choose to do so by operating as a sole trader, as an individual themselves, or they could set up a company, own the shares in that company, and then choose to operate the trade through the company. Both of those are legitimate courses of action. And as such, then that choice would be completely outside of the target area of the general anti-abuse rule. Now we're going to look at disclosure obligations for schemes that are designed to give taxpayers a tax advantage. So disclosure obligations apply to a scheme promoter if they are involved in arrangements that are intended to provide a user, in other words, the taxpayer, with a tax or national insurance advantage. And that advantage is when compared to adopting a different course of action. Arrangements is defined quite widely. This will include any scheme or transaction or series of transactions. The key thing is where that is designed or intended to give our taxpayer a tax or national insurance advantage. The relevant legislation that we're looking at here for the disclosure obligations is called DOTAS, the Disclosure of Tax Avoidance Schemes. And penalties can apply if such a scheme is not disclosed accurately or if such a scheme is not disclosed at the right time. In addition to this, HMRC will also have the power to allocate a scheme reference number, an SRN, to a scheme that HMRC suspects should have been disclosed under the DOTAS arrangements but has not been disclosed. Continuing on with more powers to HMRC to discourage tax evasion, we're now going to look at uh, rules that apply to the dishonest conduct of tax agents. So a tax agent is an individual whose business essentially is to advise clients or taxpayers with advice on their tax affairs. HMRC will describe dishonest conduct of these tax agents as occurring when that individual acts as a tax agent and does something that essentially is with a view to bringing about a loss of tax. So again, some arrangement or some scheme that is intended to reduce um, the taxpayer's liability, but it's not a reasonable or commercial course of action. That's what we would call dishonest conduct. When HMRC do have evidence of this dishonest conduct, then they can issue a notice setting out what evidence that they have. They have quite wide ranging powers, and this would include the following. They can ask for access to the tax agent's working papers and also charge penalties on that tax agent if they don't get the access that they request. 
In addition to that, they can charge the tax agent a penalty for their dishonest conduct. And that penalty can be anything between £5,000 and £50,000. And as well as that, they're able to publish details of the tax agent themselves if they are charged a penalty for dishonest conduct and that penalty is more than £5,000. So significant deterrence there for tax agents in relation to any dishonest conduct.